All right, here is the color chart, and you should have um, three primary colors in white and black on your palette. Uh, marked on our color wheel, we have red, but we'll, we'll be using magenta, and blue, I'm actually using cyan. I just find that those have a little bit brighter mixes when I um, am using paint. So you're gonna begin by putting in your primary. I'm starting with yellow. And then I'm gonna put my second primary in, which is close to it on the color wheel, making sure I wash my brush really clean so I don't have any contamination between the two. So I'm going with the blue or the cyan. Now, if I mix the two primaries, I'm gonna get a secondary. So I'm going to begin cleaning my brush again and taking a little bit of equal parts of yellow and blue to make that green. Once I fill that in, I can start working on my tertiary colors. The tertiary colors are the ones in between a primary and a secondary. So if I um, look on there, I'm going for the blue green. If you ever get confused as to which color should come first, you can always think that the primary color is the boss color. So that's the one that you would say first. So you call it blue green instead of green blue. Now I'm going to do the same thing, uh, make up some green and then add um, an equal part yellow to that green to create the tertiary color yellow green. There's definitely a science behind color and it's kind of fascinating to see how the colors mix and how they work with each other later on when we start mixing complementary colors. So here I'm working on violet, which is equal parts magenta and cyan, or red and blue. Then I think I'm gonna place my primary of red. Oh, I guess not. Just kidding. I guess I was gonna work on that blue-violet area first. So again, equal parts blue and the violet. Now we're gonna go with that red-violet. See that I am mixing things really well on the palette before I put place them down. Not mixing a ton of color either. I'm just making what I would need just to make that little triangle work. And I'm rinsing my brush really good in between every time I use that brush. You can see I'm kind of going, trying my best to stay in the lines, but it's okay if you go out of them a little bit. Now here with the red orange, orange, and yellow orange, I gotta say that it was really difficult to make that orange. I think I would have maybe tried to make it a little bit diff more different than the red orange and the orange. It ended up to be pretty close when I ended. Here I am mixing it and having a little bit of difficulty. So I put it on there and I think, well, you know, maybe I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta just straight up to the, on top. 
because they're really close. So, you know, it's, it's okay if you make a mistake. I'll just try to make them look a little different. Now here we're gonna add the yellow to the orange and to make that yellow orange, which was considerably easier. When you're done filling in your color wheel, then I want you to fill in the boxes around the outside, indicating which color is a primary, which color is a secondary, and which color is a tertiary. So we know our primaries are yellow, blue, and red. When you mix two primaries together, then you'll get a secondary. And if you mix a primary with a secondary, then you get a tertiary. So you can see how you mix them, but they're gonna rotate around in, a, in sort of a pattern as well. All right, so now we're gonna move on to mixing colors. Uh, each color that you mix is, all these formulas are gonna be five equal parts. You see that I put four dots of white to one dot of color to create a tint. A tint is really a pure color or a hue plus white. And you can, the more white you add, the lighter the tint. Here we're gonna go, but since we're doing formulas, we're gonna do four dots of white with a half a dot of black. And that's gonna keep, to make a really nice gray. So I'm gonna have you actually mix a gray because if we make a tone, a tone is one part gray to four points parts color, at least in this formula. Again, when we're working on value scales, it could be maybe two parts gray and three parts color. But for this experiment, I just want you to try these formulas. Now with our shade, we're gonna do four parts color. So I've got my four dots there, I wash my brush, and then just a half a dot of black. And this is what I want you to learn, is you do not need a lot of black when you are mixing with black. Black is a very powerful color. And that's gonna create a shade. A shade is when we mix color with pure black. Excellent. So those are our hues, tints, tones, and shades. Now we're on to complementary colors. Those are colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. So red and green. And then I'm gonna have you fill in the other two with any other colors that are directly across from each other. Here I'm doing yellow and purple. If you mix two complements together, you will get kind of a neutral or muddy tone. But if you place them next to each other, then you create contrast or kind of you reinforce the brightness of those two colors. You'll often see those colors used in sports teams. If we think of that yellow and and violet, like the Minnesota Vikings. Now we're gonna work on analogous colors. Those are colors that are next to each other or neighboring on the color wheel. Artists use analogous colors to create a sense of balance and a sense of calmness. So go ahead and fill in those boxes with three colors that are neighbors of each other. So here we have red, violet, magenta and violet. Now you're gonna create a monochromatic, meaning one color value scale. One will be white to nine, which will be almost black. So I want you to uh, create a little drawing of nine of the very same things. I did a little bit of a swoosh here. And so I make sure that I have nine of them and then we're going to start mixing our colors and we're gonna start with just pure white. So that first one gets filled in with pure white paint. 
Next, I'm going to uh, mix just a little bit of blue in with that pure white. And then I keep adding a little bit more blue, more blue, and more blue. So that I am creating sort of that deeper tint because I'm still using white and the pure hue of the blue. Now I'm getting further into the value scale, so I'm realizing, okay, I'm adding, I'm kind of saturated with the color here. This is about as much as it can take. So now I'm going to mix a little, just tiny half bit of black in with that tint. So that is making a tone, right? Because we have gray and the black in. So I've got a bit of a deeper tone of the blue. And now I'm going with a shade. I'm taking pure blue and just a little bit of black and creating a shade for my last number nine. That's why I wanna say almost black because I do want there to be a hue tone to that black. So the, the hue that we are using, the pure color that we are using is blue. And there we go, a nine point monochromatic value scale of swooshes. All right, thank you. Uh, you can make sure that that gets placed on the drawing rack with your name and period number on it. And that is eventually going to go into your art journal. Thank you.